All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, you're here to at the meeting of the Bulldog Oversight Committee meeting of January 10th, 2023. Everybody has their agenda, I take it. Okay. Um, so we're looking first to approve the agenda. Is there any additions to this evening's agenda from the group? Seeing none. Uh, so it's for someone to adopt the agenda, please. All right, Beth. Yeah, so we we'll move to Beth moves to adopt the agenda for January 10th, 2023. All those in favor? Okay. Uh, just one thing. Mm -hmm. John, are you taking minutes? Do you want me to send you the word version? That's okay. I'll do it today. Uh, no, I'll do it. Okay. I'll figure it out. Do you want me to send you the word version? Because that's what Trevor used to do. He would just type it under each thing kind of as we went. Is that helpful? Or do you want to it separate? Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to... Uh, this iPad is brand new to me, so I'm trying to... How much work did work on there? I don't even think it will. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to ask if you can do it for me. Sorry about that, guys, okay. but okay. I completely okay. forgot. And I, I actually did uh, another apology. Can, can I step back to ask a question about the agenda? Sure. And forgive me, Heather. Yeah. Um, can't remember what happened at the end of the last meeting, but I thought I had asked for an agenda item to be asked added to this meeting for an update on the signage. February. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank Motion you. Motion was yeah. Okay. Sorry. So that was that. Yes. Yes. Feels feels not coming. Uh, no, he, I believe he declined at the last minute to come up here, so, yeah. And George, we all got the emails, he's looking after his email ones tonight, so. Okay, so second item is the adoption of the meeting minutes for October 12th, 2023, and December 14th, 2023. So we'd look for someone to move to adopt those, unless there's any changes to them. Yeah. I move to adopt the minutes of October 12th and December 14th, 2023. Yes. All right. Any uh, discussion? I'll call it the question that we adopt the minutes for October 12th, 2023 and December 14th, 2023. Move by All those in favor? And that is carried unanimously. Okay. So we're going to move into discussion items then. So our first is the terms of reference review. Uh, and membership positions. So I'm going to look to Ms. Way. Thank you. Um, so typically I like to just create a discussion item for you guys to kind of go through what it was you reviewed, any recommendations, discuss amongst yourselves, and then the motions themselves um, will come in 4.1. Um, so we just wanted to have this opportunity for you guys to kind of talk through the ideas that you might have had reviewing the membership positions. Um, I will also open up this link here. Feel free to conduct a conversation about the members positions while I do that. Okay. okay. Anyone have any discussion on the membership positions? So is the membership, is this like we were talking about a vice chair last time? Is that what this is? It can, it can be if you guys want to include that. Um, but also remember there was the request of um, Council had made a, a direction to administration to review uh, the membership positions on this committee to determine whether we wanted to change them. Yeah. To make them potentially more inclusive, right. um, et cetera, et cetera. And if I may, you know, that was the, the, the concern maybe is they were too prescriptive um, and that maybe we were missing out on some of the members of the community that might be interested, but they don't fit the criteria specifically. So um, that was something that we wanted to look at, but getting your input as a group on your thoughts on that uh, would be very helpful to move forward. So. Are this, is this similar to um, what other uh, committees in the town are? From my perspective, no. This was much more prescriptive than any other committee because we were looking for specific areas of uh, I wonder, expertise. Um, and, and, and also from that area, 
nearby, right? But it does exclude quite a few people in the community. So, um, and then that limits when we comes time to have members, you know, apply. It limits that that ability, right? So, um, but no other committees are not that prescriptive. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Um, I I'm really free to. I, I've been down and out for the entire mm -hmm. holiday, so um, I've, I again I ask for apologies. But did you provide us anything in terms of recommendations or ideas or suggestions? The only thing that I um, had to say about it was that these up here on screen. I can zoom that in for you guys. Um, <clears throat> that these categories were created by the VBO committee, so right. that was the yeah. original, uh, yep. um, and that it was done through. Um, what we call a stakeholder identification process. Um, so that's just representative of, of what that work, right? So like Councillor Haas had said, um, you know, they were trying to find individuals with certain expertise. So potentially, you know, some of these will stay based on what you guys think is valuable with respect to the vision, right, that we're trying to maintain, but some may go. So I don't have a recommendation. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, because I remember when I first saw this, I was like, <clears throat> I get the gist of it. They're trying to get people from around the, the area, right around it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, geez, who cares? Like, let's bring in some people from the valley. Mm -hmm. Like, who cares where they're from, really? So I don't know how to go about that. I don't know if we want to just, I do think it's important that we signal out the indigenous and we signal out the youth. But the rest of it, I don't really, and I'd be quite open to just saying, well, let's get nine people from the town. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Kelly and then Beth. Okay. I agree with that, that we should have youth, Indigenous, and um, I think it's important to get, um, maybe add uh, parents as well, because a lot of parents are parents and families, but I guess that represents just a mm -hmm. large portion of people who are interested. Anybody who's interested being on the committee or people that are going to be out there enjoying it. Right. Um, and maybe um, seniors as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I agree with you on all the rest. You really just need to live here yeah. and are interested in it. Right. Beth, and then you Yeah, like I know people from the lower hill that walk all the time up in a Patty Creek and they're not. They might, you know, fit into residents at large, but there are I mean, people from all over who can come up and enjoy the boardwalk. You've got visitors, you know, everybody loves the place. Mm -hmm. So I would agree uh, with you on, like youth and indigenous is important, but the rest, we could be just, uh, you know, hidden residents. Good. Beyond and then Heather. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm seesawing a little bit. Just in the fact that I, no, I'm going to leave it at that. I, I, I mean, part of me would love to see, you know, people that represented recreation, tourism, environment. But more important to that is just to make sure that we have people on the, on the board. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, I don't know if there's some way of saying, like, if we have this, I don't know. I'll just leave it. I, I, I just open it up. And I do like the idea of, again, though, I don't want to force someone from not being able to be on it. But I do like your uh, senior citizen. What the parents want to open it. But the senior citizens, that's kind of cool. But again, I, I don't want to stop someone from being on it because they're not 65. Okay. Heather? Um... So I think I just wanted to note that the Maxwell Lake area residents yeah. seemed really important when we didn't have an approval from AAP. We didn't know the scope of what the design would be. So those people living very adjacent to Maxwell Lake, um, it mattered, right? What was going to be built essentially in their backyard. It's all of our backyard. But I think that one to me is, the, is one that like that's all become public information now in terms of like what is going to be built, what the, the footprint is going to stay the same, how wide it's going to be, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know that that's as important as it used to be. And then the other thing I want the group to consider is nine members is, don't quote me on this, but I'm 89% sure the largest committee we have. It's greater than council. Yeah. Um, 
So potentially one of the goals could also be to reduce the number of overall yeah. members, just something to consider. So if we, uh, if we add the max for late, sorry. It's okay. Uh, yeah, I'll put you in. <laughs> I, I just, I have myself and then Beth. Go ahead. Um, I, I do know the educational representative has been very difficult. Uh, we've never had an educational representative uh, from, I, I believe, or correct? If I'm correct. Um, I think we, I think. We did have one at one point, but I can't remember what. I think I was put in that as education. Maybe. Yeah, for the, the Whiskey Duck Club problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess when I see educational, yeah. I think the school. schools. But we all I remember that, that anyway. was yeah. the intent because we were trying to create an area where the schools would also use mm -hmm. the, the yeah, area. They do. So I think, which they do, yeah. But we haven't specifically, so, you know, from that school part of it but yeah it is the largest I was going to say I believe that it is the largest committee uh, in nine um, you know we could be more specific and, and still not descriptive we prefer we would like representatives from this areas but we're not going to exclude you know other members of our community as well uh, because I think it's important that yeah I think the valley and, and other areas you know uh, can have input too so uh, Beth Mignon yeah, just on that, like I was thinking of that, of the Maxwell Lake, it is important because people are right there mm -hmm. and use it a lot. But uh, can we have, I wonder, just some kind of, if you have a lot of applicants, preference are given to Maxwell Lake, or is that not a good way to go about this? Yeah, I mean, the criteria for picking isn't. I mean, when we have, if we have a bunch, then I mean, council looks at and think, who looks at and sees what which, who would be the best fit, you know, but I, I'm not sure if we would look at just the maximum late people area people more than any others. Uh, and yeah, that would be not sure. You know, it does make it to when you start to get this prescriptive that, you know, it limits our choices as to who we can pick, right? So uh, it yeah. can be a lot more. So, you know, I'd like to take a crack at this and just make a motion that we uh, change the terms of reference so that membership is eight people, one youth representative, one indigenous representative, and six members of a uh, town of Hinton residents at large. So I think the only thing that I would say is we try to have a odd number for voting. It makes it complicated when even. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So I would even, uh, I'd like to kind of make it friendly, kind of change it right now. Yeah, because it's, it's, we're not doing any motions specifically until the action items. So we're, we can work with it. We can work with it at this point. Yeah. Okay, so my motion is going to be uh, downsize the membership to seven, two people, uh, one for youth, one for indigenous, and five for town of Hinton residents at large. I'm trying to keep this simple and open. If I can speak to it, I'm trying to keep it simple and open. I like the senior citizens, but I don't want to start adding all these little <clears throat> like if we can get a senior citizen, then they have priority. Uh, I don't know. I'm if someone wants to be able to wordsmith that and have at it. I just have a question. Yeah. What what is quorum? Like we have seven members. Seven members? Yeah. And quorum would be four. four, four. four. Yeah. How many act? Yep. How many active members do we have now? Including Councillor Haas, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good. Plus me and Jack. <laughs> and that's a like we've never go ahead. We've never had all our full the full nine. I don't think we had a really brief period when we had Bill before Alice stepped down. Yeah. We had all, and yeah. that's it. It was going to be like three months. And then of those three months, did all of them show up all the time? I don't know. So we had a lot of symptoms. we had a lot of absenteeism from specific members too. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts on like I said, this is discussion item at this point. 
on the oh, okay. yeah. motion. Yeah, okay. we're just looking. We, well, we will be, but it'll do in the action item. So, okay. but um, yeah. we got the wording of it, and then we can have a discussion on it then too, or now before we continue. I think that's reasonable. I think. I think it's, and this is the time to do it because we've had, what is this, the third term? Uh, second, no, it's second the second term. official term, but we had some in-term appointments because right. we weren't full committees. Okay. So this is a, to see what the appetite has been and, you know, and to fill nine has been difficult. So it makes some sense. But yeah, let's make it more reasonable. So that, would, that makes sense because when the, when the applications come in, the council is going to look at them and you're going to be able to see who's a uh, good fit to, right? Yep. Yeah. And I, if I may, I think part of the application will identify some of these areas that we then consider too. Like, you know, so I, I think, yeah, like it's not official, but we're looking at, hey, this representative would be great. It's education where it's whatever, you know, so it gives us that latitude to, to, to also consider so yeah uh so if this is a discussion period then in terms of membership there was this discussion last week about a co chair chair or something like that i mean just mm -hmm. so if you want to talk about that then i think we're settled with the other part yeah <laughs> I see. Mm -hmm. So we have elected chair. We don't, and the minute recorder. We don't have a. Uh, sorry, I just had a, a uh, co chair. Co -chair? Uh, it could be co chair. It could be vice chair. Whatever. You know, however we want to word it. And that. Yep. That was brought forward by as an idea from Albert, right? Mm, yeah. yeah. And do you remember? Does anyone remember his reasoning? From my perspective, it's in case you're not here. If I'm not here, and then I think what also too, because I remember when I come and sat in because the alternate couldn't be here, uh, and then I came in, and then uh, it was discussed by Chair Councillor Stashik and Heather. Heather did it. Miss Way did it. Mm -hmm. That they just didn't want to throw in that person to chair when they haven't been part of the meetings much. So this way, I think it would create some consistency having a member of the committee being a, a vice chair in the event that the chair can't come, where then uh, Councillor Stashik would would attend but wouldn't be expected to chair, right? Because he hasn't been made that sort of been part of the meeting. So at least then there would be that consistency, right? So so in that instance. We would know, for example, that you're not coming. Councillor Stashik is our backup, so yep. he'll be here. Right. You and I would have prepared the agenda. Yep. Councillor Stashik is just here as in his capacity as liaison yep. to council. Yep. And then whoever we elect as vice chair would chair the meeting. Yes. The only pickle mm -hmm. then is if let's just say Jan is vice chair, he can't make any motions in that meeting mm -hmm. without stepping back from his spot mm -hmm. um and then he could choose and then we don't have a um because normally it's the uh, yeah i see what you're getting you know what I mean? normally it's the what do you guys call the deputy mayor yeah. that then takes the seat of the chair mm -hmm. so that that individual can make a motion so what i would if i would, would recommend is that in those cases then it would hand the over briefly to the alternate um that is present so if the council for so was so that here, no make a then no one could make a motion. Yes. Um, now, we have to look at that again because yeah. my understanding is because we followed the procedure bylaw of council and that has changed. With the uh, deputy mayor? Yeah, that you oh. don't have to. Now, I, I have to confirm that, but uh, Mayor Nissen believe that he read in there that you didn't have to anymore but we'd have to confirm that so yes can i just ask <clears throat> the reason that one of the reasons that we kind of all fell behind putting the counselor in the chair position was that a you guys know how to run these meetings so according to roger's rules mm -hmm. and b you don't get to put in motion 
pollution. Right. So if and you got this system set up where there's an alternate. Mm -hmm. So to me, if there's an alternate coming, I don't see why that person couldn't chair the meeting. I mean, they know how to run the meetings. Mm -hmm. They can't make motions. All they have to do is make trust that the rest of the committee knows the topics at hand or, and are making the right decisions. Uh, that's totally valid. I mean, it really is. Because, I mean, technically the chair is, yeah, just running the meeting from the agenda. Yeah, it's totally valid. It's really, yeah. a chairperson is really just making sure that the mm -hmm. meeting is running accordingly and smoothly. And mm -hmm. Yeah, but like this is a again, this it can stay the same, or we can look at changing it. It's that's that's what we're here tonight to see. Is there an appetite to have someone else, or we rely on the alternate when, in my absence, that they would then chair the meeting and be that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I kind of think it's already set up. I agree with that because especially Councillor Gustasha, he was here the first session, so he'll have some background. Mm -hmm. And really the chair is just to keep the the meeting moving. We don't get hung up on side yeah. topics or something like that. So I, I think um I'm I'm okay with the setup the way it is. Okay. Okay, but technically I don't think it's set up as the alternate becomes the chair. So I think we would have to make that one little tweak. Oh no! I yeah, think, I think it is set up that oh, way. Okay. Um, well, it doesn't say that in the terms of reference, though, right? In the event, no, because we didn't tie the chair. This the to, chair isn't tied to the councillor. If right. the chair was tied to the councillor, then that would be in perpetuity. Right. So maybe we want to say we're no longer electing a chair. The chair, forevermore, will be our council rep, whoever that is, and whoever shows. Yeah. I, I'm I'm pretty certain I would I don't that that would be fine. To, I I can see by the look of Beth that, that, that maybe the thought is we don't want to take away that ability from future committees that they elect someone who's not the councillor. I think it's silly not just to put the councillor in his chair just for the reasons I've already given. The two reasons I already gave, but I'll leave it at that. And to be devil's advocate, I mean. If if the if the council member was not the chair, if you had a rogue council member, you know that wanted to make motions and and throw things a monkey wrench into. I know who you're talking to. Oh, I'm not talking about anybody in particular. I'm just I'm just saying in the future it doesn't stop that person because then that person can make motions in here that then go and get. Uh, into the into the big room there with the rest of the council for recommendations, right? So there is that possibility. Uh, I think in I wasn't part of the meetings, but I think in a way that was kind of why there was that that want of maybe electing the, the, the councillor as a chair, because then it d defeats that. Yeah, I think when it comes time for the action items, I know we put in forward a motion that we just make the councillor and the alternate. The automatic chair. Okay. With the no with the elections. Okay. Any thoughts on that? I mean, we can discuss it in the action that we kill. Uh, I agree. It feels a little convoluted to be switching back and forth when somebody wants to make a motion. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Yeah. Say John was the was the chair. Why? Yeah. Let's just keep it simple. Okay. Yeah. I kind of agree to the council member has another kick of the cab and whatever we vote on comes to council too. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But I think the other from my perspective is that again, it's the committee, even though the chair is part of the committee, of course, yes, but because there is that other level that the chair as a council member has, then uh, you know, it it's a motion from the members of our community, right? And then we yeah, uh, right, then we have that more to, to discuss in there. So, yeah. So, okay. So, Jan will be planning to make a motion when it comes to the action items, okay? Got a couple to play with. Okay. Well, maybe just one big one. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and that. And Jan shall um, hereby. <laughs> So is there anything else in the terms of reference specifically that um, that we as a committee can discuss 
or what is is uh, administration planning to bring back to council any changes from their year end um at this point no i was playing around with um the frequency making a recommendation just um to change the wording back to how it originally was with quarterly or as needed um just because we're moving ahead so with the project now that I'm a little bit concerned about what our agendas are gonna, like I feel like it might be a little bit light um, over the next year, but I, I think, and I don't wanna miss the opportunity to change it, but I think we can all agree that if I don't change it and I'm like, we don't have that many agenda items, we can send a, an email out and do what council's doing right now in terms of uh, just canceling the meeting or you know pushing it, whatever we need to do. So I was playing around with that, but I, I don't think I'm gonna push too hard for it at this point. Yeah, because we always have that option to cancel if not an opportunity. I know so you leave it open. I think we leave it mm -hmm. and then yeah. Yeah. Because we are going to be talking about agenda items next as to what the members may have. So from our perspective, there may not be, but you may have some agenda items that you'd like to recommend as well. Um, so we're going to have that conversation discussion in 3.2. So yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else from committee that, because uh, I'm not sure when this is going to come to to council. So typically what I do is I will, um, like these are pretty small changes in which just these two will probably discuss whether you guys want to see the report before it goes. That's been my previous practice where I'll draft the report, bring it here. And then in that case, it would go to council after our February meeting. Um, alternatively, once we get to the motion section, if you guys are like, that's pretty administrative in nature, just take the report, then I can get it there sooner. Um, so it'll be up to you guys. Any thoughts on that at this point? Let's, uh, this is just, there's no right reason to rush. We're not, I mean, this is all about the next time the committee comes. So let's just have. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, not just give me a thought. Well, then finish your thought. Sorry. <laughs> well, and to that point, if we're changing it to seven, oh. once this goes, we are now full. Mm -hmm. So there would be no need for application then, right. anyways. That's right. So, to Young's point, there is no rush. If we're going with these motions, we'll get there. Absolutely. Yeah. So, wrap wrap it up, but we'll have one last look at it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There may be other things. Okay. So, I guess. I don't want to. Are you saying that you're open to changing anything within the TOR? We're here now. We might as well. Like, we might as well discuss it if you guys want to. Like, we can go to the top and go section by sketch section. No. But I think this, the reason why it is because then, like, yes, you, the idea of you making the change and us having a chance to review it, and then that gives us a chance because I, I thought we were only looking at this membership mm -hmm. aspect mm -hmm. that's the motion so this mm -hmm. is a chance for some of our new people to look at the terms of reference mm -hmm. as a whole and say and as heather was saying this that was a, the motion of council or direction of council but i mean that doesn't stop the group from taking a look at it we're digging into it on these matters is there any others that would potentially be recommendations from the committee if they see yeah absolutely Especially if it's coming to us anyway. So. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so maybe what we'll do then is leave it with that and then maybe get take an opportunity for the group to look at the terms of reference and we'll clear more, you know, in depth. Um, and then in our February meeting, we can put this back on the agenda uh, for any uh, further changes potentially. Unless there's and, and that doesn't stop us from tonight, but I mean, we can go session by section tonight if you'd like, but if you want some time to think about it, you know. I think it uh, gives, if we announce this idea, this would, it gives uh, George and Bill, mm -hmm. and I don't know who else for maybe missing it, a chance to be part of that. So let's not do the section by section tonight. Okay, fair enough. Just to the group then while we're still on the discussion. So the agenda then, um, so I'll prepare the changes and I'll, um, to the terms of reference. So you'll see a, 
a copy of what the new ones would look like, then I also will prepare a copy of the RFD that goes to council, uh, which will essentially just be a story about how we arrived at this this journey or this this result. Um, so that'll be there as well in the agenda for anybody that's new, um, kind of just giving the backstory and uh, kind of a frame of the conversation here tonight. So you'll see those both of those items uh, before it goes back to council. Okay. And if I may, from my experience, if we can have what it is, and then on the side, what oh, we're changing changes. it to, yeah. yeah, just so that we see what it was to what it's going to be, yeah. it just, because then we're not going back and forth. Yeah. So yeah, that's all just, it's easier to see that. Okay. All right, is there anything tonight further on terms of reference review? Uh, anyone had a membership position and the chair? Hey, yes. No, well, I, I, I'll just say that I hope this term that the chair and everyone stays strong on the whole uh, missing meetings thing, because mm -hmm. in my opinion, that kind of fell apart at the last term and People were missing a lot more than uh, what is it two three just what? looking yeah it mean, is it <laughs> and that's a good point so uh, uh, yeah let's just <clears throat> refresh our new committee that we all because I think it's important because well and, and I agree because people just vanish into the ether and and, and there may be members out uh, or citizens out there in the community who like to want on yeah. to be yeah. part of that so it leaves that opportunity for someone else and to just that back so yeah yeah if you had a comment yeah i agree with that because there were a lot of gaps mm -hmm. um, there is actually it's specified you look it up how many you missed before in your class to leave <laughs> yeah. yeah usually committees have that mm -hmm. i mean we do as council uh, we do as counselors so if it's not in there then i think that's just an oversight because i think we talked about it well and i think it was and then i think maybe it came if it's not in here, meetings. Oh, here we go. Reasonable effort to attend. If a member must be absent from meeting, it's the responsibility of the member to notify town administration and chair. Meetings will be held. Mm -hmm. That's what we'll say. I, I would, uh, then as a discussion mm -hmm. point, I would think that we add that. Mm -hmm. And in my viewpoint, uh, yep. three meetings in your own. That's if someone wants to go with two, I'm not going to be. But three. I think there's a specific wording. I think we're looking at because if it's three um, unexcused, like if there's a reason for the yes. given, there yeah, is totally, you know, totally. But it, as long as we're wording it specifically, and that would be administrations. But I agree. But if it's unexcused or you know didn't make known or something like that, and especially then, now with the added convenience of being able to do it over Zoom, yeah. but then there's even less reason. Absolutely. I think it might actually be accounted for in the council committee's bylaw, so uh, I'll have to double check that. So maybe just kind of um, when we get to the motions part, if you want that included explicitly in here, um, let's just keep the, the motion kind of general for me to find a spot to pop that in, and I'll go steal it from wherever it already exists. It'll be right after the key, yeah. King Yon, okay. <laughs> I'll fail. Okay. No. Uh, uh, what follows Ember? Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's important that even if it is in the committee's bylaw, that okay. it is stated Correct. in here because then it's very clear enough to different go to different document for it. So yeah, no, very good point. I thought it was in there too, but no, um, and maybe it is. For, it's maybe not under the heading we're looking, but but it will have a motion to make sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Good. So we got three things. Anything else? Knowing this will come back to us next month, but uh, this gives Heather a good start on, you know, at least bringing back those things and making those changes for us. So, okay. If there's no other on the terms of reference review, then we'll move on to three point two, which is the agenda item emailing procedure. So, just yeah. I would like to speak to it just because I'm the one who asked for it.
Right on, sorry. So in the first two years, uh, the one thing that was noticed was a lot of communication was happening via email, including questions to administrations, questions to chair, questions to other members, and sometimes there was answers, sometimes there weren't, sometimes it took a while, some, you know, whatever. So I, I don't, we don't need to get into all that. I think we just need to settle as a group what are our expectations for emails, email, emails, email communication. Mm -hmm. So that everyone is totally under the same understanding. I think the last term, none of us were. Okay. Administration, do you want to sure. start with Maybe that? And then like... um, so what, to Jan's point, one of the challenges is that as an admin rep, it's not really my position um, or my role to be answering questions outside or bringing information, giving new information outside of these meetings. Um, so in conversations with Councillor Haas, we thought we could probably come up with a happy medium that addressed one of the concerns from, from last week, which was, well, when I leave the room, I come up with some really good ideas for what I would want in the agenda, but then I, the moment has passed, right? So what I thought was we would put together this, this calendar, being that um, the blues are the days of our meetings. So um, one week before that, so the green boxes, Councillor Haas and I have scheduled the agenda prep meetings. Um, well, and then typically I have the, the agenda released by the purple box um, for our meeting on, on blue. So what we were thinking was that after you guys leave here, rather than saying all of the motions have to happen in here, if you have items that you would like um, addressed and brought forward or considered to be brought forward for an agenda for the upcoming meeting, you'll submit those to the chair um, by the orange box. That will allow Councillor Haas to bring all of those, whether it's a list of 20 or two, um, to our agenda prep meeting here. That At that meeting, now we may have a list of 20, right? And then Councillor Haas and I need to decide, whittle that down. We need to whittle down what I can provide in that meeting, what makes sense. Um, and then any remaining items, we will bring um, as an action item here to be voted on. Um, because potentially, like, look, that is, that's going to take two months to gather all of that information because maybe we need AP or a consultant or whatever. And maybe that just means, okay, we don't need that now. Let's make a motion to put it on August, similar to what we did with the map. We picked a date and put it on there. Um, or potentially there's an item on there where the committee's like, I don't need that information. I don't support that. Um, and then it gets voted down and it, it doesn't make its way to an agenda. Um, that's the process that we kind of came up with that we think would allow you guys to ruminate a little bit more, gives an opportunity for everybody's stuff to potentially make it on the agenda. Um, but it also allows the chair and admin to do our job of preparing the agendas for what's pertinent uh, for what this committee has governance over. That's my spiel. Box. Sure. I think that's great. Um, I think I was I know I sent some emails, you know, so really should this be on the agenda? Mm -hmm. but, but this uh, having a, a, a process is a really good idea, I think. And then it's like, okay. And then the decision, you guys will talk about it. And then potentially we can talk about it at the beginning of the next meeting as well. So, so to, to make it doesn't guarantee that the item you sent is going to get on an agenda, but it does give the opportunity for the group to make that decision. Um, and as and it made that um, Heather or Miss Way and I look at them and we're not sure, and we bring them all right. We we don't we can't see any of these that really fit right now. So let's take them to the committee and see what they want on the on future agenda. So yeah, so it leaves that uh, opportunity. Uh, and gives you time uh, to to consider, you know, so you're not caught in the off guard. Off guard. And, and it also gives you maybe time to think about it too. And like you don't lose that idea, even though you might not be able to talk about it at the very next agenda. Mm -hmm. so right. It's been brought forward and yes. everybody sees. Absolutely. And it'll be on this next agenda or whatever. So yeah, you know it's coming forward. So okay. So I think the other thing what I'm hearing you on say is that 
we also want to discuss tonight about about that email quite if we have questions in between and how that uh, so we'll have a conversation with that but you know do you have a thought on the agenda so did you say that there's you know say that for whatever reason there's a whole slew of things brought forward your and i um so you were saying that to me like it, i thought i thought i thought i heard that there's a chance that something wouldn't make it to the agenda Yes, but that would be a decision of committee. Decision of committee. So what? Done by email? No. So what it would be is is if if like Heather's if you if I got we got ten agenda items came to me and then I would review at the next agenda yeah. prep with Heather and then we'd say okay these two need to go on the agenda these other eight we're not sure but we're still going to bring them to the committee these are some some uh, ideas for the next upcoming agendas does the committee see that worthwhile to add them to the agendas and then it gives that's them... going to happen before the meeting yeah at the meeting, at the at the meeting. meeting. it'll yeah. happen at the no meeting. no that's fine yeah. as long as they're on the yes on the be... playing field yeah they will be it just it'll then help to no, that's fine. That that's decision right. yeah. committee. so yeah um, just so for clarity on that, though, so let's say we have five things that Councillor Haas and I either didn't understand how they fit in or we wanted to bring them here for you guys to vote on. Likely, those are because you asked for something that I either not clear what you're looking for. Or I don't have access to that information yet or something like that. So getting it voted in right at that meeting does not mean that we can talk about it at that meeting. No, I may no. need to go away, yeah, yeah, yeah. get whatever it is that you guys asked for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I just want to make sure that there are all five of them are oh, yeah. on the agenda as possible things. Yes. And so that they're not, one isn't just forgotten. Yeah, no. Do. No. Nope. No, and when I, I will take the emails and I will bring all those emails to, to the agenda prep meeting. So, yeah. So if you're in favor of that, then we'll we'll probably need a motion in the action items from someone in the room to to that being the process. Um, but the other matter is on emails that aren't about agendas items, but have questions. Is the concern is you know how long do we expect to wait? Where do we send them? How to is that what I'm hearing? What the process? The so we're all well, but you know, I guess I was thinking that becomes an agenda item. That question becomes an agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like if that's my vision as well. If someone asks some really detailed question about I don't, you know, because I, I understand where Heather's coming from. Mm -hmm. So uh, to me, that's the like the person just unfortunately is not going to be able to get an answer right on way. They're going to have to wait for the next meeting. Right. To see if it goes on the agenda. Okay. Because my understanding, but yeah, I'll leave it at that. No, and I, because I hear, because from my perspective in council, we may have questions in between meetings that we'll ask, and then sometimes it will be a CEO answers it or whatever. It's not an agenda item for a meeting. It's just something come up. But that's what I, what I hear what you're saying is that those questions, and maybe we can also figure out is this a necessary for an agenda item question or can this question be answered yeah. in a in another way uh so that yeah like, can we just leave it as if if you i'm picking on you oh, let's pick on you if you're able to answer the question answer the question right <laughs> and that's what but, i'm thinking yeah or you can answer you can you can say this is what I think, but let's bring it to the next meeting and we'll discuss further. I just get oh, no, if able to, right? Mm -hmm. That's all. I, I just get a little bit uncomfortable where you know I, I answer a question and it seems like guidance. That's not my role here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so if I I would be more comfortable if, if in those instances if the email went to Councillor Haas and then we discussed, can we do a response here? Right, and then if not, like Jan said, we just bring it, bring it to okay. the table. Yeah, and my, I guess for me, my thoughts were, and maybe this gets too complicated, but I'm just gonna thought tour it. If I know I have an agenda item I want to put on, then I would send it to me. If I'm not sure if it's an agenda item or if it's a question. I'm a big fan that we all get that email, all the committee get that email, and then. 
I then look at it and say, you know what, this looks like more of an agenda item, but I, I respond to everyone and say, look, we'll review that at agenda prep for as an agenda item versus if that's a question that, you know, maybe they have a question for, for Chad on something that isn't really an agenda item, but it's something that we want. I, I can vetter that if it, I, I, maybe that's maybe making it more complicated. I think it might. Trying to think of examples, and I'm trying to think of like there was times where I know I asked like, a couple. Like, yeah. Well, you asked a lot, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but and, and you know, and a lot of people asked a lot, of yeah. and a lot of them were like, you know, did you say that the blah 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 quote was for three hundred and twenty five thousand or something like that, or you know, how much do do we was the how much did we pay a year ago for? Blah blah blah. Yeah, like that was the kind of stuff. But and the challenge for me is a lot of those ones were not uh, in my project. And, and so that's why I'm bringing it up on purpose. Yeah, so like I how... couldn't speak to them because they were from another department. So that's an example yeah. of. So they're so they're so my thought on that is if that's the type of question, then I Heather is not the one I would then actually send that to our CAO. And say, or and and then say, Jordan, can we please send it to a member and give me an answer for for the committee and send you an answer? That then takes it off your plate. You're aware the answer was out there, like because I get that there's sometimes some questions. I don't want every question to have to be an agenda item yeah. as well, right? Because not every question is going to be an agenda item. But if we all see it, like I think there's some blatantly that that's an agenda item, and then. I have a question, so I'm going to send it to everybody, and then I'll look at it and consider: is this an agenda item, or or I'll consult with you and say: is this an answer that Jordan I can send the Jordan question to Jordan and we can get an answer for, or is this something more in depth? Um, that's my thought. I, I, and maybe, like I said, maybe I'm complicating it, but I want to make sure that we still. Because we don't want because if you do that, then we're waiting a month for an answer that could be a simple answer and and whether he so, makes it on there so the way i'm hearing it is we're not going to be expecting heather to answer so if it's a question i think it's up to the chair to decide whether this is going to become an agenda item at the next meeting or i as the chair am going to try to get an answer from whomever from the and appropriate I, yeah and i can do that like I can do that, and that would be a simple. Jordan, where do I go to get this answer? And if he gives me the go ahead and says email this director or whatever, then I'm okay with that and gives you an answer. So I'm I'm perfectly willing to do that. Which then takes yeah, then it it takes Heather out of that position. Uh, and then if it is a thing that's more involved, then I would then just answer to all that reply to all that will consider this at the next end of prep for on the agenda. Um, one thing I'd like to add is when you're sending those, like, so one of the things I noticed last time, particularly for like Chad's area, is that sometimes the lines between committee business and the Chad as the parks supervisor was kind of blurred. So keeping in, like, if you're asking a question about a bench or a program or something like that, you can just send Chad an email separately, right? So really try to wear that committee hat and go, is this actually a committee question? Or is this something that could be served by the parks department? Um, so you may be able to just direct your question separately. Um, so just thinking about that as well, because we did have a couple of those in the last two years. And if I may add to that, CC me as well, because if they're starting to blur the lines, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but if it does, then it would be a, you know, we got to bring that in a bit right so at least then the chair is involved in all the all the communications with the administration and then if kelly's sending a bunch that's not i'm just looking at you but okay. if kelly's sending a bunch that's not committee related um then i would have a conversation with kelly and and, and talk about that uh but i can't do that if i don't if i'm not cc so so you will uh one thing left on here um so you'll notice at the bottom it kind of covers that so i did put a reminder on there for you guys that all um committee communications um that occur outside of this room have to include everyone yeah. right so we can't have one person not having that information which is why 
Councilor Haas is saying you need to CC him on that. Um, so make sure that everybody from the committee is CC'd on that, with the exception being, if you have a code of conduct complaint, do not send that to all of the committee. That is a private um, conversation between yourselves and the chair. <laughs> um, but of course, as citizens, um, you guys, like, if you need me for something outside of this committee, you can always email me privately and you don't need to CC Councilor Haas yeah. if it's like about the pool or whatever. Mm. Yeah. So any thoughts on that from the, especially the new newest members, Sterling and Kelly, and I know George is here, but any thoughts on that or any? No, that makes sense. I don't want to make it sound like there's like a bunch of problems, but I think it just clears up a lot of things and it, it makes things more efficient that way. So now as to when a person will get back to you, um, I will always respond to you with what I'm prepared to do fairly quickly uh, within a day uh, at most too. Uh, but usually within that day, I usually check my emails frequently. Um, but, um, and it'll either be, I've got your email, I'm looking into it and then give me whatever time uh, might be. Cause I don't know, depending on what administration can get back to me. Uh, but we try to, I think within two, three days is hoping to hear from administration on it. And if I haven't heard, then I'd follow up with them and that email as well. So. Okay. so for a motion for this one, I didn't make its own agenda item uh, because in the um, action item section, you guys can afford any motion anytime. So this one doesn't have its own, its own uh, but just a simple motion to adopt this calendar um, will be helpful when we reach that point. And then I'll circulate it around to everybody. So we all have a copy. Oh, I can bring it up in round table. Okay. Oh, there's a round table. Okay. Okay. So if there's nothing else on the email procedures and, and agenda, then we're going to move on to 4.0 action items. Um, so start with 4.1 with the committee recommended changes to the BBOC terms of reference. Okay, Councilor Ross, I have your one. motions, Yon, if you want to do those first, or do you want to do something? Nope, I'll do the, those two. Um, so motion from Jan um, to amend the membership of the Beaver Boardwalk uh, Community Oversight Committee terms of reference to reflect one youth, one Indigenous, and five town of the town of Hinton residents at large. Okay. Any discussion question? Um. My only procedurally, does it have to mention specifically going from nine to seven, or I guess it's just that's the motion and then you would bring that to the attention of the council. Okay. Okay. All right. Seeing none, nothing, we'll call the question that motion. <laughs> I'm not going to add one that in front of me. And I yeah. want me to read it again. Sure. Uh, we call the question motion to amend uh, the membership of the Beaver Boardwalk Community Oversight Committee terms of reference to reflect one youth, one Indigenous and five town of Hinton residents at large. Can it, um, can we say uh, at least five? And then if there ends up being nine? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Or should it just be? I think seven? you have to keep it closed to, yeah. to a number. Yeah, we have to have it a, a specific number. Yeah, because if, if because we're running into that with another committee I'm on, we can only have mm -hmm. certain, and there was a person who wanted to come on, but we have to change the bylaw then oh. to have more. <clears throat> so okay. if we see that all of a sudden we got a bunch of applicants and a lot of interest at some time, we could consider that at another time, but yeah, yeah. Good question. Yeah, sometimes we'd like to add some, that's where the vetting goes in the looking at who would be the best fit, right? So. Okay. You're always open to not look forward to, like, not to, to argue why you want nine. No, no, I think it's a good idea. I think okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Then we'll call the question that motion. All those in favor? And that is carried unanimously. Jan, I believe you have another motion. Uh, motion to amend section <laughs> 6.1.1 to reflect the council member as committee chair. Okay. Any this further discussion on that? Sterling? Uh, yeah, would a council representative always be able to come to the meetings or? 
So if I'm unable to, then a counselor Stashik is my alternate. If counselor Stashik is not able to come, then the mayor comes instead. Um, and then there was a time where that wasn't, so then it was the next deputy mayor or the deputy mayor came. Uh, that was why I came one time. So, yeah, so there will always be somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other further questions on that? Then we'll call the question. The motion to? Motion to amend section 6.1.1 to reflect the council member as committee chair. All those in favor? Two is carried unanimously. All right. So I believe we have one other motion to, in regards to the uh, calendar. I'd like to make a motion that we adopt uh, the new uh, meeting calendar as put forward by Edmund. If you want to resubmit that, how about her? That was pretty good. Okay. So, committee, any thoughts or questions on the calendar being the method for agenda items or adding agenda items? Seeing none, then we'll call the question that we uh, adopt the meeting calendar as presented. All those in favor? And that is carried unanimously. Right. Do we have nope. another motion about attendance? Or was so we do have another motion about that. Yeah. Okay. Go for it, Megan. Man. Yes, please. Uh, I don't count the right words. I like to make a motion. Are they the council committee bylaws regarding attendance being incorporated into our terms of reference? Let's not tie it to the council committee ballot in case I'm misremembering and it's not right. there. Okay. So something um, like for a direct administration to include a section regarding committee attendance. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion directing the uh, administration to um, include information on attendance in our terms of reference. Good. Thank you. Yes. Okay, committee, any further thoughts, questions, discussion on that motion? Seeing none, then we'll call the question the motion to add the uh, committee attendance to uh, informa information for the terms of reference. All those in favor? And that is to carry unanimously. I think that covers everything that we discussed in the discussion items. We will potentially have more for next month when we look at more in depth at the terms of reference, but uh, I think that's, I think those are some reasonable starts. And I think those were some reasonable um, expectations uh, from, from council as well to, to see if we can open it up. So, um, so with that, then uh, we finished with action items. We're gonna move on to our information items. 3.1 tower replacement and sunken section options. Mm -hmm. Is the number incorrect? We go yeah, absolutely not. Uh -huh. So sorry, I can't yeah. believe I missed that. Absolutely. So that would be five. Yeah, my that, bad. Go. I'm really good at counting. I'm gonna go back here. <laughs> um, thank you, Councillor Haas. Yeah. So um, just an update. I met with ADP as well as our consultants regarding two things. Um, for clarity regarding tower replacement, um, and the sunken section. So first I wanna start with the tower replacement and we're talking about the south tower that is currently deconstructed. Um, we had some concerns that uh, the tower would not be allowable under our current maintenance approval due to the fact that the tower was already deconstructed at the time that we did the survey for where the pilings are that was submitted to AEP, um, that they, which they approved our maintenance plan based on those pilings, right? Because there's two types of kind of plans that we may have needed from AEP. One being maintenance, which is what we got. And the other one is a full new Water Act approval. Um, so in this case, because the aerial photo that we took through that um, piling process 
um, had a photo of the roof of that tower demonstrating that it was there at the time we submitted our request. They're going to honor that and allow us to include it within um, our maintenance approval. Pending construction drawings uh, or design drawings um, and just making sure that um, like we're not moving the, where the piles were. So as long as it's in the same, we're not moving the location and we're not, whatever the design ends up being, we're not um, impacting like the hydrology of that location, uh, then they'll be good to allow us to just simply do an amendment under our current um, uh, maintenance approval. And that amendment is just to have um, a design drawing included. Um, so I'll get started um, working with our, infrastructure director to see which which way he wants to go um likely because it's a tower we we may go we should go engineered um which will be a little bit more costly um but at least then we're we're sure that what we're building isn't going to be in the same condition as last time so that's that's positive there questions on on that one? Oh, and that's about a three month probably amendment process with ap up to three months okay john since you go to an engineer, is it? Do you have? I can't. I think you guys. You guys have one engineer that automatically, or does it go over for tender or anything like that? No, no. So we have five different um, companies that are essentially retained by the town for different stuff. So we have a structural engineer. We have like a transportation engineer, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the infrastructure director will direct me on which one of those is appropriate, the structural engineer, um, and they will essentially provide direction on um, what the pilot, like what weight the pilots need, what length they need, all that kind of stuff to get its engineer staff. Your guy may, could also decide that we don't need an engineer, is that what I heard? The infrastructure director? Yeah. He, he, he may, I, but I would think. I think the first time that he was here, he said that he really hopes to stay out of engineering as much as possible, so if you're listening, so I'm not sure which way that will go for sure, um, but we'll we'll know more. So the one question that we need to kind of start thinking about, um, and I don't we don't need a motion on it today. I just want to send you guys away with this thought in your mind about the tower specifically. Is given the footprint has to stay the same, do we want to see any other design changes to the tower, or do we simply want it replaced exactly as it was, and matching the other tower that's still standing? So you guys can discuss that, I guess, but um, really that'll be for another meeting. Okay. Committee, any thoughts? No? Um, probably in this case, um, an engineer would be good because it's already failed. But so an engineer in terms of the depth of the piles and all of that, because we don't want to have to put it up and take it down again. In the future. So that's just my two cents. Let's talk to the infrastructure more to make the decision. But, um, and then uh, to me, uh, just to put the tower up, uh, that would save an awful lot of Water Act approval. Um, I'm amazed that they actually, I was like, whoa, that's pretty something for them to approve based on a picture of a roof. Mm -hmm. um, so I, to me, the most um, efficient uh, way of getting it is just to reconstruct it like it was, and it does match the uh, the uh, tower on the back of the lake. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Beth. Yeah. So I could put a question to you, Beth, but well, whoever else you remembers the towers. Did you? The way I remember the tower, I haven't been over to the other tower in a while since. Um, it's pretty high up, which I understand for safety reasons. I'm thinking of the of the visibility and the unique uh, thing of where the, the 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 string band would play. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if there's some way that we can kind of instead of having a wall up to here, we could somehow open up that space a little bit to allow visibility. So you know, instead of having a wall where you're kind of looking over to see everything. If there is some way to be able to see stuff down below, like rails, instead of a wall, have tight rails or something, mm -hmm. um, or something, that, and also something that allows the sound in case those that string those string people are still around with us, then they can come back and 
have the sound go a little bit more. Um, Stuff like that. Yeah, that, I, you know, really, I have no problem with the way it is, but the, I mean, that, that is something, uh, you know, just the design of the actual rails. Um, I'm sure there's a safety thing, that's why they're good, right? And you're high up, too. But, yeah, uh, yeah, but I'm just, like, I think yeah. sometimes rails can replace the full wall. Yeah. Well, yeah, but they could be on. Um, rails would be fine. It was a wall. It was a yeah. wall. And I think another thing that we could, in that consideration is for children. They oh, yeah, want sure. to see, but right? Is yeah. that, yeah. You know, then the parents don't have to yeah. lift them up. But yeah. I'd rather them be able to see on their own. Um, so, I mean, if there's a way, yeah, yeah. To, to eliminate how whatever is safer, but to, to not have a wall, but have some sort of way you can see through. Yeah. yeah. That would be nice. I've been up there in the ones and it's, you know, a bit of mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think it did. And that's not the. Yeah, I'd have touched yeah, that. No. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's fine. Like, like, yeah. Or maybe peek throughs or something. Like, yeah, I, I thought peek through, but rails would be the ultimate, I think. Yeah. They're just, oh, okay. So just there are also oh, there are rails. Yeah, yeah I thought it was rails. Yeah. Okay, well, then I'll shut up. Yeah, no, I, I, I thought it was a wall, too, to be yeah. honest with you. I thought, it, well, it is now, isn't it? Or so the, now that we see other, a picture, now, though, maybe the other one. I'd like, to, I'd like to see if we could build a trebuchets or catapults <laughs> <laughs> we can sling biodegradable balloons from one tower to the other tower <laughs> I, I think you might want to go to disneyland <laughs> uh, now i gotta look at the other tower is there a wall there but not here i think it's similar to that is it yeah. Mm, yeah that does seem weird to me interesting it, interesting and, and i don't know if this is in the design but just the thought too is having one of those binocular things that people can see out of to like if the beavers they can then look at the beaver like you know how all buildings have and you can look over them you know in chart no let me say 25 cents but no uh but uh i don't know just some but that doesn't have much to do with the design but no, that would be after. yeah we would add an after just the thought but as i see that but yeah, I guess it does have the rims. I always have binoculars, but I guess everybody was supposed to be tall. Well, then I think sometimes yeah. tourists know, right? Or whatever. So, yeah. But, okay. Any other thoughts on the design at this point? I mean, we'll make, I guess the thing is making sure it's accessible that we can see through it in the yeah. future. We're, you know, uh, because maybe even they're so close together, maybe that's why we think they're a wall. I don't know, but uh, and it could be for safety reasons too. But obviously, but uh, okay. And that was an agreement to keep the tower, all that stuff. That was in one of the priorities, I think, in the, oh, yeah. In the past. Yeah. So, yeah, what I recall. So, okay. Go ahead. So the second piece is the sunken section. Some decent news there from them. I was pretty surprised. Um, they, at this point, they want us to do a couple things. So in the spring, they want us to take a look at what kind of vegetation and um, aquatic habitat might now exist on the sunken section because it's fully submerged. I know when I looked at it last year, there's like, it's not called moss, what's that stuff called? Algae and whatnot growing on there. So once they heard that and the fact that it's kind of embedded into the side um, of the wetland is not out in the middle, right? It's part of the shore, which is, um, I guess, of higher importance in that area. So to remove it, they're thinking is actually gonna be more disruptive to the wetland than um, simply leaving it in place and building on top of it. However, to build on top of it, they want us to kind of maintain the same footprint. I said, well, that's gonna be challenging since we can't necessarily see where those piles were. Um, so, like I said, they want us to take a look, see if we can get potentially some, some drone footage uh, over top of that in the spring and see what we can see. Um, from there, they're looking for uh, design drawings only, so it won't be required to be engineered. So they just want to know um, if we can't see those piles, right? They want to know what footprint we would build. Um, and at that point, they will decide whether that's an amendment or a new 
Water Act approval, though it sounded like they were leaning towards amendment. Um, but it's really going to depend on what is yielded from that investigation in the spring. Um, questions on that one? We talk D. Nope. Oh, B. Are you yeah, about so, the tower area? Yeah, so the section here between A and B. So B is now oh. mostly sunken, but we don't even have between A and B on the map because it's sunken. It's gone. It's just gone, right? So you will recall that our current maintenance approval is maintained in place. Um, but because again, that one wasn't surveyed because it was sunken, right. that one was kind of left in limbo as to oh, yeah. where does it fit. So that's where we're at with that. Just yeah. coming. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly don't think we need to connect A and B. It's sunken, it's gone. <laughs> we have a previous motion from the last really? session from Bill right. saying, and the committee agreed that that section, if AEP would allow us, we would deal with it, whether it's remove and replace um, or leave in place and replace as long as AAP would allow us to do so. And it's sounding like they will. Like yeah. what you're saying is not at all. Like do redo B, I mean, because yeah, it, it, you can walk out and it is more solid, like B is solid, but to go between B and A, I, I just almost like, that's my only opinion. I don't see the purpose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We actually, this might not be B bar business, but the Whiskey Jug Home has uh, again a plant ID course mm -hmm. plan. Part of it would be on the board bar, and we could identify all those wells and everything on the lot of B. <laughs> like we already have a whole list of plants on all the different parts of the board bar from last year. So we were going to do one day just on the wells, so we could go on, on that B section ID plan. So I might even get a moss person. Two but that's the side, I guess. So, but anyway, that was just my thought that, yeah, uh, B is tricky but doable to replace. Is that sort of what you're saying? So, B itself is starting to submerge. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> so, it, it is within the current scope. We did get those pilings when they were. Uh, uh, when McElhaney was out there, those ones were marked, so B can absolutely be replaced. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, this committee already decided that we would, if AP allowed us, do something about repairing that section that is sunken. Um, so all I'm going to do at this point is wait for spring and then assess the situation and I'll bring that back uh, when we get there. But I just wanted to share that uh, we do have some options in front of us. But I... Excellent. Any other information I am done? That's it. Yeah. I forgot to add something to the agenda today. I'm so sorry. Okay, go ahead. Um, a bit of a pickle. I'll be on vacation in February for our meeting. Um, so I can prepare everything and you guys can keep the same day and I'll send director Juke or Heather Mark in my uh one of my rec supervisors in my place to do all the admin stuff. Or we can move the meeting, but then we'd be looking at the 25th. Uh, oh wait, wrong, wrong month, stand by. So right now our meeting is February 8th. We'd be looking at, um, I don't get back until the 20th, so the 22nd, but then we have a meeting like three or three weeks later, so. Why don't we wait till we get to the next meeting date? Or do you want to do that? Yeah, or do you want to wait right now? Or do you want to, because it says February 14th here. You said February 8th, so. So no, yeah, oh, so second. no, it is. It is February 14th. Is it wrong on the calendar? Oh, the meeting about people is 14th. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, it is. Really much. Well, actually, I was going to bring it up too because I, <laughs> yeah, I was going to bring that to the committee as if that's a night that some people, <laughs> hey, I just don't want anybody to get in trouble. Yeah, exactly. uh, so, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we can, yeah, we can figure that out if we want to. Sure, we'll do that yeah. next meeting. Sure. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go to roundtable then next, which is actually number five. Uh, but roundtable, Jan, you had, I will start with you. I believe you have something for roundtable. Yeah. Um, the status and, uh, of the SharePoint, did you end up using SharePoint? Mm -hmm. for, for document, for holding documents of the committee. Mm -hmm. And getting so people can get ease of access 
add to it and all that kind of stuff? I did. I brought it to a meeting and asked everyone to go home of that committee. I think, well, it's just the two of you. Yeah, now. I never did. Yeah. And to go I, home and get your links, but I didn't. So did you try it back and you got it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. So we got it fixed. Yeah. Um, I didn't, I didn't hear from you. So I just assumed it wasn't working. Uh, That's okay. I, That's great news. It's working. Yay. <laughs> it didn't work for me. Okay. But then I, it didn't work for you, but then I had somebody look into it, try to fix it. And I resent everything. Um, so what I'll do is I'll pass those off to the new members. Um, I'll just resend invites to everyone. Beth, I might not have to do yours. I'll double check. Um, please try and access it. If you have a problem, send me an email separately because that I spent like a million hours putting everything in there. So it would be nice if we used it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll just jump that down for me. Oh, and I guess I'll need one too. Thank you. Hey, anything else you want for a round table? No, no. Sterling. Um, I don't really have anything to say. I think this meeting was good though. We got a lot of stuff done. Okay. And Kelly? Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. I too will be away next meeting. Okay. So maybe it's a good idea with taking a look at the seat. Okay. Um, I just said this may be for down the road. I'm not sure if Heather's uh, able to look at it. In the last spring, we were sort of talking about potentially looking into having a conservation designation for the Maxwell Lake. And, look at it. and um, I don't know if that's probably at the next meeting or sometime down the road. Mm -hmm. You stole my round table item. Oh. Okay. Um, so I did. I talked with our consultants as well as um, AP. And then I found, oh, I can't, I saved the link and I can't remember. There's a group in Alberta that isn't AEP, but helps understand various ways that this can be done because there is the, the municipality can decide to do it, or you can go the provincial route. Um, but then there's different layers, much like a wetland, right. right? Of, you know, the highest classification and that limits all activities in there and then different kind of categories. So um, I'm just kind of working now on potential, uh, getting a presentation together uh, for that. So it's, it's on its way. Um, I've finally been pointed in the right direction. Well, yeah. Yeah, because it is uh, it is a unique thing mm -hmm. like, to have a conservation area inside the municipality. So that would be really interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I could add, mm -hmm. I heard rumors that uh, Sterling's dad, who's brewmaster, is going to be making a BBOC gluten free beer and that we will get free beer once a month. Yeah. Beep off beer? Yeah, beep off beer. But I'm not mad about this good. as an idea in principle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That would be like, beep, beep, you won't see beep. Bring that home with you. There you go. No. <laughs> Beth, you got anything else for round table? Uh, just that. No, just that for okay. now. Uh, Heather? No, that was my idea. That was yours? Okay. Chat. Okay. Chad. Sorry, Chad. Okay. Yeah. okay, and you already have yours. So uh, for me, I wanted to give you guys a heads up. Um, our last uh, meeting, uh, we had brought forward uh, a draft parks bylaw. Um, so basically what we're doing is the RCMP came to the town uh, talked at the liaison uh, the police committee uh, meeting. Um, they're having some struggles with people that are uh, nighttime visitation to parks and different town areas. Um, and it also is uh, in regards to squatter camps. And currently right now, the only the only mechanisms we have is the town nuisance bylaw um, and and that's pretty much it. Uh, and there's complaints of noise, there's complaints of other things. So they don't really have any teeth to do anything about it, to be honest with you. Uh, so if there's people in Lions Park that are there at two in the morning, um, they don't have a lot other than to say, you have to, you know, can you please leave? So they're bringing forward a, dra a draft of a parks bylaw considering um, some sort of curfew uh, in these areas that gives then the police, uh, RCMP and community peace officers the ability to manage these pro these problems a little bit better. Um, so the reason I'm uh, bringing that to your attention is 
Uh, potentially, we're, on the next agenda, we're going to have first reading of it, and then there will be, uh, be cons consultations with stakeholders, this group being one of the groups that was identified, uh, because that would include the Beaver Board. Um, and we don't want to prohibit because we do know people use the and disc golf is another one, but they use them exactly. So the disc golf mountain park, park, park the mountain bike park, uh, and the and the Beaver Board Box. So there'll be consultation with those user groups to get some insight on their thoughts on it. Because I understand that some people do disc golf late at night, uh, okay, um, and some people take their dogs for walks on the Beaver Board Box at later at night. So we don't want to exclude that, but what are the mechanisms that we can consider? So there'll be some consultation there, um, you know, and it's it, they're one of the biggest reasons that uh, it came up is all for fire safety. Um, there's a lot of fires that are happening in these areas and we all know that it's been dry and we don't know what, so this gives a, it's a good time to be discussing this uh, and giving the RCP and, and community peace officers, you know, an ability to, uh, to remove these individuals if, when need, if necessary. So so I just wanted to put that on your radar. It will be coming to us um, at some point. There'll be some consultation and we'll be able to give some recommendations. And if you have any questions, please. Yes. Yeah, we, like it's it's a tricky thing because we'd have like owl problems on the beaver board back at night, like listening for owls, and, mm -hmm. you know, like with a formal group. But then I've been down the FS room from the fire because there's Obviously, somebody's high or whatever digging for gold. Yeah. You know, yeah. Honestly. So it, it's not an easy thing to deal with. Well, and, and those are the incidences where, for example, right now you could call in and complain, but there's nothing really stopping them from being in that area at a certain time right now. So that's what the, the intent is this is that if you're using it for reasonable reasons and and whatever but if there's 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 disruption in that area then once called then this bylaw that potentially might be in place would be able to then assist our our, our police enforcement to deal with it yeah so and i think that's the main intent like right now within our nuisance bylaw and the fact we don't have a parks bylaw, there's just no mechanism enforcement mechanism for the rcmp to use yeah there would, and it would be fine based, like it would be then issuing tickets and, and things like that. That would be the idea and intent of it. So, but, um, but yeah, so I just wanted to, you know, bring it to your, to your radar and uh, yeah, it may be a, uh, I'm not sure how, whether it'll be a future agenda item or if there'll be some sort of other way to consult the, the members uh, the administration comes up with, but uh, just letting you know, so. And you can try to chew on it a little bit too and think about it. Uh, and it will be on the agenda for next meeting. Uh, next meeting is going to be a long one, but it will be on that one. So. Of council. Yeah, council. Yeah, of council. Yeah. yeah, so of council, <laughs> not of this guy. So uh, other than that, that's uh, all I have for roundtable for this group. Okay. So that brings us to our next meeting mandate now. So uh, this way is not here. Kelly, understand, is not here on the 14th. Yeah. Um, it is Valentine's Day, so I'm not sure, you know, uh, Stuart, Sterling may have a date that night or something that he has to, I don't know, but uh, any thoughts on move, what date are you are you back? I'm gone for a long time, so I'm oh. gone from the 2nd to the 20th oh, okay. of February. Um, so for me, I think my preference is that you guys choose a day that works for you guys, and I'll send in the backups to be here. Um, those are my thoughts. Okay. So any thoughts on? Um, I trying to think. Thank you for It comes to that question, like how much business we have right are we going to be i don't know i, I i'm just going to ask the question are we going to be getting any news on the maybe right like i'm just wondering but i mean let's be honest if I, well and honestly on like i think one of the only big things for february is the maps or the signs uh map right um but if i get the news 
if I get the news, then um, potentially we call a special meeting so that I can share that with you guys and the community. So I, what I'm putting forward is don't have a meeting in February. Because the, the, her problem is, is that we once we get into the 21st or 22nd, then we have a meeting coming up like a couple weeks later. Right. It's a short thing. Yeah, we, we have a lot of gap between now and February. Although you'll be gone on the 7th. I'll be gone on the 2nd. Yeah. Um, and then even if I, when I get back on the 20th, that just wouldn't leave me enough time to put something together yeah. and get it up to the group. And how long are you going to go? From the 6th to the 15th. To the 15th? Oh, okay. So, I mean, so, yeah. currently right now, the only thing on the agenda is the Wayfinder find your sign. Itch. I mean, that could potentially wait till March. We could do March to March for those. So we could, yeah, at this point, cancel the February meeting um and then wait till march and that, unless there's, unless there's mm -hmm. news and we and that that always yeah you know that we can follow special meeting well, i guess conversely we could book a meeting for the 22nd and then cancel it if so. well whatever way you use whatever way you see mm -hmm. the, mr chair at this point i think if that's if that's the consensus of of the committee we cancel the February meeting, um, and then yeah, if anything comes up, then we we call a special meeting, and it won't we won't have Heather here necessarily for that special meeting, but we'll have a representative here, so and we'll try we'll do try to do it when everybody's back. So does that make sense? That works for everybody. Do we need consensus? Uh, uh so to I, yeah, the meeting, we would need I'd a motion to cancel. And then also conversely, can I? Um, maybe it's just consensus for me to edit the calendar that we previously sure. adopted to reflect that. Yeah. yeah. So we have consensus then the, to cancel February meeting. All those in favor? Okay. Adjust the calendar. That doesn't mean that you still can't send your you send your mm -hmm. emails, whatever for agenda items for the March meeting or or future meetings, but uh, you know continue with that. Yeah. Yes. Can we confirm the March meeting, please? Yes. Mm -hmm. Meeting for the second Wednesday of every month, 13th. March 13th. Okay. Maybe we don't need it because it's a change of the calendar. We'll just send yeah. a reminder around saying that it's because yeah. they can still send their stuff. So we're, yeah. we're good there. Yeah. All right. So is there anything else for uh, comes to mind before we have a motion to adjourn? Valentine's Day in your dad's peabock beer. All <laughs> <laughs> right. So we'll move on to 6.0 adjournment and look for a motion. Beyond moves to to adjourn. All those in favor? And that is Gary Dinos. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Job well done, Mr. Chair. Your first chair of the year. Yeah, right. Good job, Minute Taker. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Heather, I do really apologize. <laughs> totally. So I'm gonna have to go and figure out what piece of the app is best for.